गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू चैप्टर नाइन ऑफ आर आई एस सी हिस्ट्री बुक द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज कोल्ड वॉर एंड दिस इज पार्ट फोर ऑफ योर चैप्टर एंड इन दिस मॉड्यूल आई एल डिस्कस विद यू द एंड ऑफ द कोल्ड वॉर लेट एस ब्रॉडली डिस्कस द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द टॉपिक द फर्स्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू डिस्कस द ओरिजिन ऑफ द कोल्ड वॉर हाउ दिस फिनोमिना स्टार्टेड इन द वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री The second objective is to discuss the reasons behind the Cold War. After that, the third is to discuss the course of the Cold War or the events which have actually took place during the Cold War era. And lastly, the objective of this topic is to discuss how this Cold War ended, which were the circumstances which finally led to the end of Cold War from the world history. Students. in the part 1 2 and 3 of this chapter i have already discussed with you the reasons for the emergence of the cold war that is the origin of the cold war the reasons behind the cold war and the events which have taken place during the cold war and in this module i am going to discuss how the cold war ended which were the factors which finally led to the end of this phenomena from the world politics let's first discuss the new terms of this topic the first new term is cold war cold war was the open yet restricted rivalry that developed after world war 2 between the united states and the soviet union in short cold war can be described as period of intense tension between usa and ussr that started after the second world war in 1945 and lasted till the disintegration of ussr in 1991 the next word is detente detente which is a french word meaning release from tension is the name given to a period of improved relations between united states and the soviet union that began tentatively in 1971 so detente means relaxation in intense relations which existed between usa and ussr in 1970s the presidents of both the countries started visiting each other's country which resulted into improvement of relation between both these superpowers the next word is ostpolitik ostpolitik was the normalization of relations between federal republic of germany or we can say frg or west germany under america and eastern europe particularly the german democratic republic or gdr or east germany under ussr beginning in 1969 students we have already discussed in the previous module that after the second world war germany was divided into two parts the west part of germany or federal republic of germany also known as frg was given to america while the east part of germany which was also called as german democratic republic or gdr was placed under ussr berlin wall was erected between frg and gdr and along with both the superpowers these two parts of germany was also the victim of the cold war but in 1969 the relation between the east and the west germany improved which was called as ostpolitik the next word is strategic arms limitation talk the strategic arms limitation talks were two rounds of bilateral conferences and corresponding international treaties involving the united states and the soviet union The Cold War superpowers dealt with armed control in two rounds of talks and agreement that is strategic arms limitation talk 1 and strategic arms limitation talk 2 by signing these agreements both USA and USSR agreed that they would decrease the production of the deadly weapons the next word is Helsinki agreement The Helsinki Act was an agreement signed by 35 nations that concluded the Conference on Security and Cooperation in Europe held in Helsinki, Finland. 
The multifaceted act addressed a range of prominent global issues and in so doing had a far-reaching effect on Cold War and U.S.-Soviet relations. This agreement was not only signed between USA and USSR. In fact, 35 countries of Europe have signed this agreement. This agreement was helpful in decreasing the tension between USA and USSR and proved vital for ending the Cold War era. The next word is Prestoroika. The literal meaning of Prestoroika is restructuring, referring to the restructuring of the Soviet political and economic system. Prestoroika allowed more independent actions from various ministries and introduced many market-like reforms. When Mikhail Gorbachev became the president of USSR, he started the policy of Prestoroika according to which reforms were introduced in political as well as economic system of USSR. If we have to summarize the policy of Prestoroika, it means reforms, it means opening of social and political system of USSR. The next is Glasnost. Glasnost was taken to mean increased openness and transparency in government institutions and activities in Soviet Union. Glasnost reflected a commitment of the Gorbachev administration to allow Soviet citizens to discuss publicly the problems of the system and potential solutions. Students, here the word Gorbachev has come. Gorbachev was the president of USSR who have brought this reform of Glasnost. It means changing the political system of USSR where in the communism only one party used to dominate and people were not having right to express their views. By the reform of Glasnost, Mikhail Gorbachev, the president of USSR, asked the common people to give their views about the government and ask the government departments to be more transparent. Now let us discuss the events and the circumstances which finally led to end of the Cold War period between the two superpowers. Cold War was the period of immense tension between the USSR and USA from 1945 to 1991. It divided the world into two groups the capitalist group and the communist group. Students, the capitalist group favored the privatization that means on all the means of production there should be only the private control and government should not interfere. This group was led by America. The other group was the communist group which favored that over all means of production there should be government control and private property should be banned. USSR was the leader of this group. In this period of Cold War, military organizations like NATO, that is North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and Warsaw Pact were formed by both the groups to increase their influence in the world. But in the 1970s, both groups changed their policy of hostility and opted for the policy of cooperation. This greatly helped in ending the Cold War era. The first factor which helped in ending the Cold War was the period of easing of tension and detente in 1970s. The word detente was used to mean a permanent relaxation of international tension or the end of Cold War. The first sign of real detente between East and West came in the early 1970s, stimulated probably by the continuing fear of nuclear war and the horrors of Vietnam War. Students, in the course of the Cold War, I have already discussed with you the Vietnam Wars. Both USA and USSR were directly involved in the Vietnam Wars and had to bear a heavy economic loss. At last, the good sense prevailed and the leadership in both the countries realized that they had to improve their relations, otherwise the world would be on the brink of the nuclear war. There were specific motives of different powers for the detente. 
number 1 for example china was anxious about their isolation in international politics and worsening relations with russia though china and russia both were the communist countries but their relations were not cordial this was one factor that both china and russia wanted detente or relaxation of immense tension with usa the second factor was america felt that policy they pursued in vietnam war was to be revised and a policy of peaceful coexistence was needed to be adopted as america was the country which has to bear a lot in the vietnam war it had sent its troop in the south vietnam and that is the reason now the leadership realized that they have to change their policy russia also thought in different way russia wanted to reduce expenditure on defense so as to increase the standard of living of russian people along with the satellite states students satellite state means a state that is formally independent in the world but under heavy political economic and military influence or control from another country countries like czechoslovakia poland hungary yugoslavia were the satellite states of ussr and now ussr wanted that the standard of living of all these countries have to be improved and for that they have to improve their relation with the capitalist country whose leader was usa the last reason for detente was in fact the most important cause that was the fear of the western states who were worried that they would be in front line if a nuclear war broke out willy brandt the vice chancellor of west germany wanted to develop better relations with the other country this policy we have already discussed in the new term also was known as ost politic so the countries who were either the allies of usa or ussr and they have formed the different military pacts like nato and warsaw also realized that it is futile to engage themselves in the cold war they wanted to build better relation with each other and william brandt the vice chancellor of west germany openly said that they wanted a good relation between all the european countries which was called as ost politik next factor which helped in easing the tension between usa and ussr was signing of strategic arms limitation talk and regular diplomatic visits by usa and ussr both america and russia had already established hotline telephone link a hotline telephone link is a point to point communication link in which a call is automatically directed to the pre selected destination without any additional action by the user so by establishing the hotline telephone link both these countries try to discuss the urgent important issues the next important step was the signing of strategic arm limitation talk that is salt in 1972 american president nixon twice visited moscow which is capital of uh, russia in 1972 and 1974 while the russian leader brezhnev paid a counter visit to washington in 1973 America even decided to export wheat to Russia. By the Helsinki Agreement of July 1975, America, Russia, Canada, and almost all the European states accepted the European frontiers settled after the Second World War. Next factor which helped in ending the Cold War was improvement in the relation of America and China. The relation between America and China was far from cordial because America backed Chiang Kai-shek while China supported and backed Ho Chi Minh. Students during Vietnam wars China and America supported different leaders. America supported Chiang Kai-shek who was anti-communist and wanted to make Vietnam a democratic country whereas Ho Chi Minh supported 
communist regime in Vietnam. He was against capitalism and democracy. The attempt to break the isolation was initiated by China by inviting the American table tennis team to visit the country. In order to make good relations with the USA, China invited the American table tennis team to their country so that the official talks could be started between China and USA. In response, America did not use her veto right on Chinese entry into United Nations. Students, her veto right means right to reject any proposal. Only the five permanent countries of United States have this right that if they don't like any proposal, they can reject it. As China has come forward to improve its relation with USA, so USA did not use the veto power on entry of China into United Nations. As a result, with the help of American vote, China became a member of United Nations. President Nixon and Ford also visited Peking in 1972. Students, Peking is now known as Beijing. The relation improved further when American President Jimmy Carter decided to draw recognition of nationalist China, that is Taiwan. The climax of detente between China and America was seen when Jimmy Carter gave the formal recognition of People's Republic of China in 1979. Finally, in 1985, an agreement was signed on nuclear cooperation between the two countries. America withdraw its recognition to nationalist China, which was against the communist China, and gave recognition to communist China as America gave recognition to People's Republic of China in 1979. By signing the agreement on nuclear cooperation, the relation of both America and China was better. And this was yet another factor in ending the Cold War between the capitalism and communism. The next factor which helped in ending the Cold War was poor relation of Russia and China, which were both the communist countries. The relation between Russia and China was not cordial because of China's disapproval of Khrushchev's policy of peaceful coexistence and his claim that it was possible to achieve communism by methods other than violent revolution. Students, Khrushchev was the president of USSR who was of view that instead of using violence, peaceful cooperation should be used to influence the countries to become a communist country. But this was against the principle of Chinese government. This policy of Khrushchev was against the ideas of Lenin and China accused the Russians of interpreting the teachings of Marx and Lenin to suit their own needs. The Chinese government believed that according to Marx and Lenin, who were the pioneers of the ideology of communism, revolution is only the way to establish communism regime. And if Khrushchev was opting differently, he was changing the basic structure of communism according to their own needs. The hardcore communist government of Russia was also not happy with the Khrushchev soft line. So this difference in the ideology of Khrushchev and communist regime of China was responsible that why Russia and America came closer to each other. Russia now reduced economic aid to China as being part of the communist bloc, Russia was providing financial help to China, which it stopped now. Apart from ideological argument, there was also a frontier dispute between Russia and China. But now China herself allowed a softer policy towards America. At the end of 1970s, it became apparent that both Russia and China tried for American sport against each other in the struggle for leadership of world communism. The 1970s were totally different from 1945. Here, it was not the tension between America and USSR. 
it was not the war of ideology between the capitalism and communism in fact the 1970s witnessed the war of ideologies within the communism between russia and ussr we had both wanted american sport so that they would lead the communist bloc the next factor which greatly helped in ending the problem of cold war was the regime of gorbachev it started in 1985 and lasted till 1991 gorbachev introduced two of the biggest reforms in ussr that is perestroika and glasnost mikhail gorbachev was the most dynamic leader russia had ever seen for many years he was determined to revitalize and transform the country during his stay in office he introduced several policies which revolutionized the internal and external affairs of the soviet union he wanted to modernize the communist party with the new two policies known as perestroika or restructuring and glasnost which means openness perestroika was one of the economic reform of mikhail gorbachev Restoraika means opening up of Soviet economy to open market forces. By 1987, private ownership of business was allowed for the first time since 1920s. He wanted to introduce reforms for the inefficiencies he had seen in the state-controlled agricultural sector. Apart from this, small-scale private enterprises were also allowed by Gorbachev. The motive behind this reform was to provide competition against the slow and inefficient services provided by the state so that the state sector or the public sector can also boost up and can also do well by seeing the efficiency of the private sector another important aspect of prestoraika reform was to provide alternative employment facilities to the people Gorbachev realized that introduction of automation and computerization had lessened the scope of manual and electrical work. He also removed the central control over raw materials, production quotas and trade so that the factories could work according to the orders of the customers. So this was the first time that the Russian economy was moving towards the line of total privatization special feature of prestoraika was alternative employment facilities were provided to people that if number of people in one industry was sufficient they were shifted to some another industry so that people can be provided with job opportunities gorbachev also introduced many cultural reforms in the internal affairs gorbachev introduced the concept of glasnost which means openness This was a distinct break from the authoritarian past of the Soviet Union. Glasnost led to greater freedom of speech, freedom of worship and a reduction in state control over individuals' lives. Around 1000 political prisoners were released during this period who was anti-communist and arrested by the earlier governments. Long banned anti-Stalin novels were allowed to be published. Media was also given freedom to discuss and criticize the policy of the government. Under the political changes in 1988, Gorbachev declared that Soviet Union would no longer maintain political control over the Warsaw Pact countries. Warsaw Pact was the pact which USSR has signed with its satellite states or its allied countries. Gorbachev gave the eastern european countries the right to follow their own political agenda this drastically changed the european political map starting with poland the eastern european countries experienced peaceful democratic revolutions so many countries which were earlier with the ussr bloc now became democratic countries the pro soviet communist parties were thus replaced by other democratic parties this was like a revolution a shift from communism to democracy most simply in 1989 the berlin wall was also torn down 
East and West Germany was allowed to unite again and this was one of the climax point of end of the Cold War. And finally, with the disintegration of Soviet Union into 15 states, the Cold War was ended in the world politics. In 1980s, the Soviet economy was in bad condition due to inefficiencies of planned economy that was under the government control and the huge sum spent on the arms race. Gorbachev felt that the Soviet Union could no longer afford to spend such great sum on military system. This led to the signing of Nuclear Missile Reduction Treaty with America. This effectively ended the Cold War, which had dominated international politics since 1945. So at last, the good sense prevailed. The leadership of both the countries realized that they have to effectively end the Cold War. With signing of Nuclear Missile Reduction Treaty, both countries decided that they will cooperate with each other. In 1989, the Soviet army was withdrawn from Afghanistan to save the costly expenditure of the state. In December 1991, Russia itself had split up into separate republics like Russia, Ukraine, Georgia, Belarusia, Uzbekistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. And communist rule came to end after 75 years. Naturally, with the disintegration of USSR, the issue of Cold War did not rise in the world again. Students, on your screen you can see the map of Soviet Union. In 1991, it was split into 15 countries. Here is the vast country of USSR. In 1991, it got split into 15 countries, namely Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova, Belarus, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania. So these were the 15 countries which was formed out of the giant USSR in 1991. And with the disintegration of USSR, the Cold War was finally ended. These are the objectives we have covered in this module. The period of detente between USSR and USA where the leadership of both the countries visited each other. Then we have discussed improvement in relation of USA and USSR where both the countries signed strategic arms limitation treaty and promised each other that they will reduce the production of the deadly weapons. Then we have discussed the poor Russo Chinese uh, relation because of competition between both Russia and China. So they were fighting that who would be the leader of the communist bloc. This also helped in ending the Cold War between USA and USSR. And we have discussed the policies of Mikhail Gorbachev, Glasnost and Prestorica. Prestorica was the opening of USSR's economy to the world economy and glasnost means the freedom of expression given to the people. And finally, we have discussed that with the end of USSR, with its disintegration into 15 states, the Cold War was finally ended. These are the questions we have covered in this module. Define Prestorica. What do you mean by glasnost? Why did Gorbachev agree to the proposal of German reunification? How did poor relationship of China and USSR help in easing the problem of Cold War between USSR and America? What were the cultural reforms introduced by Gorbachev government in USSR? With the end of this module, we have completed the chapter Cold War. So let us discuss the mind map of the full chapter. In day one, we have discussed the origin of the Cold War, where we have discussed that after the Second World War, in the Yalta Conference and the Potsdam Conference, decision was taken how to divide Germany and conflict started between USA and USSR. Then, in day two, we have discussed the causes of the Cold War, where we have discussed that the American President Truman 
came up with $400 billion help for those countries who would join the American bloc. Marshall Aid was extension of the Truman Doctrine and these were the American plans. Opposite to it, Molotov, Comcon and Cominform plans were also introduced by USSR to provide help to those countries who would join the communist bloc. In day three, we have discussed the course of the Cold War where we have discussed the Berlin blockade by USSR, then formation of North Atlantic Treaty Organization, a military pact by America, and Soviet Union's reaction to it, the Warsaw Pact. Then we have discussed the first and the second Vietnam Wars and involvement of America and Russia in the Vietnam War. And finally, we have discussed the Berlin Wall, which was erected in 1961, which divided not only East Germany and West Germany, but divided the world into two blocks of communism and capitalism. In this module, we have discussed the period of detente or relaxation in 1970s between USA and USSR. We have discussed that both Russia and China were fighting with each other and they wanted to lead communist bloc and that's why they came closer to America. We have also discussed the policies of Glasnost and Presto Rica. These were the reform policies in economy and political system of Russia and these were introduced by Mikhail Gorbachev. Then we have discussed that finally with the disintegration of USSR into 15 states, the Cold War was finally ended. You can see a YouTube link on your screen. If you want to explore more on this topic, you can use this link. With the help of this explanation and internet, we are advised to make notes of the above topic. We will meet you in next session. Till then, have a nice day.